The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field. The truth of the gospel teaches us that there are wicked spirits and like robbers they beset us on the path of, to our heavenly journey. And so we must as it were guard the gospel truth that our Lord has given to us. For he who flaunts the treasure that the Lord has given desires that the robber come and take the treasure from him. And so, in today's gospel, we learn a most profound truth. For if we are to truly understand the scripture, and if we are to maintain its integrity, then we must read it in the light of a profound truth, that when our Lord speaks, he either implicitly or implicitly, in some way, is giving praise to his blessed mother, the blessed Virgin Mary, and our mother in the faith. And so, in the former parables of the sower and the seed and the grain and the mustard seed and the leaven for the bread of St. Matthew, our Lord has declared the nature, the power, and the efficacy of the gospel. Now he declares the price to be paid if we are to maintain and hold on to the gospel that we have received. That is, if we are truly to possess that which we have received in our baptism. And so... All things are deservedly so to be counted as loss in comparison with the pearl of the gospel truth. And why is this so? For the doctors and fathers of the church tell us very clearly that the pearl of the gospel is none other than Christ himself. The son of Mary in his humanity and the eternal son of God the Father in his divinity. And so each and every one of us as members of the mystical body of Christ are bound by charity to preserve this treasure with great zeal by providing ourselves with the doctrine of life and with the doctrine of life and the gospel living and so we must reflect for it is the most precious of all treasures and truly all things in this world must be counted as dross in comparison to the marvels we have received in our baptism and how we are to preserve that. For in preserving it, we must turn to the mother of God, who is the model and example of all of those who are on the journey of faith. And in, this, we must, we, and in this, we begin to understand the very nature of discipleship. For we often confuse the word discipleship with an apostle. But when we talk of discipleship, the first disciple of Christ, not by way of time, but by way of priority, is the Blessed Virgin Mary herself. For a disciple is a follower of a student, a mentor, or a teacher, and no one was a follower of Christ from the first moment of that conception, save the Blessed Virgin Mary. For our first parents fell from discipleship, and all of us, save the Mother of God, have contracted the stain of original sin, and so at some point in our lives we were at enmity with Almighty God. An apostle is one who is commissioned, that is, sent by the teacher to hand over the, t the teacher's doctrine, and that is the very root of the word tradition, to hand over. And so, Our Lady truly is first in discipleship. And so, the doctrine that we have received, this gospel, this gospel doctrine, is to, preserved, is to be preserved by, a mem by the members of the faithful, by the constant study of the perennial truths that we have received in our baptism. And indeed, again, we turn to the Most Holy Mother of God to understand this most profound mystery. For from the first moment of her conception, she began to reflect upon the Word of God and the perennial truths. She studied constantly the revelation of the Old Testament, and so she, like no other creature, knew what to look for because she understood what was said to the patriarchs and prophets of old. And secondly, the gospel life that we have received in baptism must be preserved by sacramental living. And often we do not understand that the mother of God herself lived the sacramental life. And indeed, many of the doctors and fathers point out to us that the reason she spent so much time on earth after the departure of her son was in order to instruct us and to show us how to live the Eucharistic life. 
And there, and in this, we come to know and to understand what is it, what it means to be authentically human. For to be a human being, God has. For to be human, God has created us all out of His love, and in order that we truly fulfill the will of God in our lives. He has given us each and every one a vocation that is a divine calling. And so human life is not a natural life in and of itself. For to be human means to live ultimately the supernatural life. And so every member of the human family has been given a vocation by Almighty God himself. Whether you be the Pope, a bishop, a priest, a religious, a father, a mother, a child, a doctrine, a politician, and all other vocations, in order for them to be authentically human vocations, they must be lived in accord with the divine definition of that vocation. For it is Christ who defines each and every vocation that the human person has received. And we are called to respond to that vocation and to live it out in accord with the manner that it has been shown to us in what is the model and exemplar of every single human vocation under the sun. It is none other than that blessed life lived at the holy home at Nazareth. It is none other than St. Joseph exercising that protection in the, flight of, in the flight into Egypt. It is the life of Bethlehem. It is the life in Egypt. It is the life in Nazareth. And ultimately, it is the life on Calvary. And so, St. Joseph again teaches us a most profound truth. For when he had to bow out of that mystery, he bowed out in order to protect our salvation. For if he had been present at the sacrifice of Christ, he would, being a just man, have to have taken the place of the Lord himself because he was the rightful heir to the throne of David. And so there is not one part of human endeavor, not one part of the human mystery that we cannot learn from the Holy Family at Nazareth. And so... Ultimately, we learn most especially in the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary, for she lived out her vocation from the first moment of her existence in the most extraordinary and holy manner possible. And each and every one of us must strive to enter in to that life of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to try with all our being to live as she loved, as she lived, because she loved. And she loved God from the first moment of her conception. And she knew like no other creature that no human being is called to happiness in this life. But we are called to a happiness that transcends all we can see because we are called to the happiness of the, of the, of the beatific vision. And so our Lord in his teaching taught us that the divine trinity is the central and constant theme of his teaching. And it was the Divine Trinity that was the center of the Blessed Virgin Mary's life. Human activity, the Blessed Virgin teaches us, is only human when that activity is lived in relationship to the triune God from whom we come. And so, essentially, our Lord has taught us in the Gospel that there are three human activities. That is, prayer in a, in a unique relationship to God our Father living the gospel morality in relationship to God the Son, and the sacramental living in relationship to God the Holy Spirit. And this is what St. Francis so profoundly understood when he declared that of the Blessed Virgin Mary, she is the firstborn daughter of the Father, for she is always in union with him in prayer. She is the mother of the Son, because she is always doing the will of God, keeping his commandments. She is the first, and she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit because she lives in a most profound way the sacramental life we have received. And so, if we enter into the mystery of God, we do not concern ourselves with the things of this world. We do not concern ourselves with how the secular authorities tell us life is lived because we come to know and understand that Christ and Christ alone has the power and the authority to tell us what is human because he seeks our eternal beatitude. And so let us strive to live that life of the mother of God because if we live this life, it is then and only then that we are carried by the mother of God to the portals of heaven, our true home.